So, what is SEO? The question that's on your mind and the reason why you're here. Well, let's talk about it. On your screen, you can see a definition and it's quite a popular definition of what SEO is. To read it out to you, it is the process of improving a website's visibility on search engines. And one who practices it is an SEO. Now let's look at this statement because I don't entirely agree with it. And as, as I explained in the introduction of the course, I believe that there are many SEOs out there who don't know the basics of SEO, the 101. And that is the reason behind me creating this course so that you who wants to be an SEO or who is an SEO and wants to become a better SEO knows the fundamentals of search engine optimization. Now for me, if a search engine cannot read or access your website, there's no way you can improve its performance or visibility on search engines. So the most fundamental part of SEO is making your website accessible to the search engines. If you don't do that right, you've got no SEO, you've got no way of improving your search engine optimization. And to get that right, there's technical and fundamental things that you need to understand. And that is what we're gonna learn in, the, in this course. And you're gonna take that away and apply it on your website, on projects that you're working on, whether it's in-house or at an agency, you're gonna apply that knowledge and gonna show everybody what SEO really is. So keep on watching, there's a lot to learn. So hey guys, I hope you're still doing well. In this video, we are going to learn about how search engines work. And we're going to look at it from the point of view of Google because obviously it's the main search engine. Now, by no stretch of the imagination does it mean that what we're learning here does not apply to other search engines like Bing or Yandex because predominantly all search engines work in the same way in terms of how they access and store web pages. Now, search engines work in different components, in different parts. There's the crawling part, there's the indexing part, and then there's the algorithmic part in terms of how web pages are presented to users. So without further delay, let's start. As you can see in front of you is one of my beautifully crafted slides. Joke. You know, I'm, I'm not a graphic designer, so I apologize, but I'm sure what we've got here is sufficient and we can learn what we need to learn. So as I mentioned, search engines work in different components or different parts. There's the uh, crawling part and indexing part. There's the uh, algorithmic part in terms of how it ranks web pages and how web pages appear in search engines. So let's talk about the crawling part. Now, as you can see here, there are these spiders, these creepy crawlers. What are they doing there? Well, all search engines, they use a software application called spiders, which are essentially bots. What do these spiders do? These spiders access web pages. And when one of these spiders, one of these search engine spiders comes to a web page and runs through it and reads it, it's called crawling. So when we say, has Google, Google crawled this page? What do we mean? We mean, has it accessed it? Has it read it? Has it then stored it in its index? Okay, in its index. We'll talk about this in a bit. So as I mentioned, when a spider comes to a web page, it runs through it, it understands it, passes it. That process is called crawling and it is done by a software application called spiders, which are essentially bots. Now there's many, many different types of bots. Many different websites have bots. And if you've ever used, used, sorry, used a software, SEO software that crawls links all over the web and gathers data on links, they also use spiders and bots. So when Google crawls a page using a spider, it understands it, it reads it. Now, how does it crawl another page on the same website? There's one way 
which is known via sitemaps, but the main way it does it is if on that web page there are links to another web page. Now most websites have navigational links, so typically about us services, contact us pages, those are links on a particular page that go to another page. When these spiders find links, it follows that link. So it comes into a page, it follows that link and goes to another page. Then it crawls that page. Now we've got two pages. Now, most likely on that page, on page B, there are going to be links to page C and D. The spiders then follow those links and crawl pages C and D. Now, if we're in one particular website, most likely there may be a link to another website. These spiders then follow that link and go to the website, the external website. Okay, so they've come into website A, they found links to pages internally on this website, follow those links. Then it finds links from another website and it follows those links. And this whole process continues and continues. And this is how search engines, particularly Google, is able to crawl millions of billions of web pages and collect them and store them in its index. Okay, so when Google stores a web page, it's called indexing. Okay, it crawls, then it indexes it in its index is vast massive data centers now why have i put this little icon here this you know this process here as part of this process is crawling indexing but also there's this understanding bit this is the bit that we're all here for the seo bit how does google crawl you know crawl these pages index them and then make them appear the way they appear in search results, you know, in in uh, in a very ordered fashion. Let's take a look at that in detail. So, we've talked about crawling, we've talked about indexing. What what happens after that? You know, what, what about the algorithmic part? What are the part? What about the part that I'm concerned with? You know, the SEO part. This is where this icon comes in a bit. This brain. Now, what I want you to think about as well is search engines are like a library. You know, Google is like a library. It stores all these web pages, millions of billions of web pages in its index, just like a library stores books. And when someone types in keywords in, in the search engine, it kind of like behaves as a library index. It looks at certain things to find that particular page or a relevant page that that user is looking for. So if you were to go to a library and say, hey, you know, Mr. Librarian, I want to find um, Arsene Wenger's book, his biography. That librarian goes into the computer and types in certain keywords, for example, Arsene Wenger, book, uh, biography, and waits for the results to come up. That's pretty much how a search engine works. You go to Google, you type in certain keywords, and Google responds with matches according to what you're looking for. That's how search engines and Google have worked historically. So, the algorithmic part. Why have I put this brain here? Because Google has become so advanced that it can use machine learning to understand what you are looking for or what a user is looking for. So, for example, if a user types in Barack Obama, there could be many Barack Obamas in the world, but by using technology and machine learning, which is called rank brain at the moment, and we can learn about that more as, as we progress in the course. Google thinks that you are, or the user is looking for Barack Obama as an ex-president of the United States via machine learning. So it takes in the search query that someone's typed in, it processes it, it runs it through its index, it finds all relevant pages and information about Barack Obama, and it returns it to the user. So it goes into his index, computes it, re you know, looks at web, what all the information you can find in terms of web pages and links and other components about what you're looking for. It weighs it in terms of its algorithm. And we know about the Google algorithm. We can learn about that more uh, in detail a bit later, but it's got over 200 uh, ranking factors 
of how it, it ranks web pages. So it goes through its process and then it returns the results that you see on the screen. Okay. And we're going to talk about that more in detail about the, how Google returns results on its uh, search pages. So that's the process of how search engines work. It's a crawling part using search engine spiders. There is the indexing part after it's crawled pages and gather them and store them in its vast data centers. And there is the algorithmic part that search engines use. And Google has a massive algorithm. People always say, yes, there's more than 200 factors or signals that they look at in the algorithm in terms of how it decides to show websites according to what the user searched for. But it doesn't mean it's limited to 200 or just over 200. It could be way more than 200. It could be, it could be thousands. 200 is just a number. Okay. So that's how search engines work. And we are going to go more into detail about the specifics in terms of the algorithm and how Google displays um, websites on its search results pages. So keep on watching guys. Hey guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to be learning about Google's worldview. And by the end of this lecture, I want you to have an understanding and a perception of what Google is trying to do with its search results in terms of what it returns back to its users. Now, what is Google's worldview? Well, it's something that I think, you know, or something I believe I've coined. You may find it around the web, but it's not something that I've researched or looked up. It's not something that I've seen people term and talk about, but I have seen people talk about the same concept and reflect uh, the understanding that I'm, I have on and what I'm going to teach you here. So what is Google's worldview? Well, it's what I believe is what Google is trying to do with its search results and what Google has become. I believe that Google has now become more of a recommendation service than a search engine. Now, what do I mean by that? If you go up and research by yourself, Google would always say, we want to return the best results for our users and we want to be able to do that in a way that we think they are intending. So when they search for something, Google wants to interpret the search that you make or someone else makes in the best way possible and return to you results that they think you are looking for. Because if they don't return to you really good results, you won't be using Google anymore. And that is a big reason why people say they don't use Bing because they look for something and it returns them something that is completely unrelated and is just not really good at returning great results like Google is. Um, now, I don't want to discredit Bing. It's just my personal opinion and it's uh, the opinion of many other people who have used Bing and who decide not to use Bing anymore and stick to Google. Now, the best way to teach what I'm trying to say here and, and get you to understand what I'm trying to say is obviously to demonstrate. Now, what do I mean by Google's worldview and what I've said previously at the beginning of this lecture? Well, I think that Google is now favoring big brands because it or popular brands or authoritative websites. And this certainly does this because we will talk about this later in when we talk about things like um, uh, Google raters and uh, your money or, or your life um, concepts when it comes to websites and web content. Now, when Google says it wants to return the best results to its possible users, yes, it's dependent on each keyword because each keyword is dynamic, but most of the time it actually means a reputable source. And this is a fact and Google even says this. So um, let's demonstrate what I'm trying to say. So simple search, burger. Okay, everybody enjoys a burger, whether it's a meat burger or vegan burger. So I'll type in burger. Now, I guarantee you here, we would see a popular brand in the organic search results. So let's ignore this other stuff at the moment. So we're scrolling down, we've got a Wikipedia page. We've got BBC Good Food Guide. Burger King, there you go. A very big brand of burgers. 
Burger and Lobster in the UK, where I am, is a very popular brand. Honest Burgers, again, is a very, very popular brand. So this demonstrates and proves what I'm trying to say, that Google favors big brands and its world search view, or in terms of what I say is Google's world search view, is to return reputable brands to its users because if it returns a website, for example, um, that doesn't even make burgers, it just talks about burgers or it doesn't even talk about burgers as you and I know it or most of the world knows it, it's talking com about completely something else. It could be talking about snails and it returns websites like that to its users when they search for burger, you are not going to be really happy and other users won't be really happy. They're going to think, what's this? This is rubbish. Now, let's go back and again, further add evidence to the claim that Google's worldview, or what Google is trying to do is return reputable brand, um, results and big brands to users. Here, Beef Burgers, BBC Good Food Guide, very well-known recipe website. TripAdvisor, a you know global website of user-generated content in terms of uh, traveling and in terms of uh, things to do. Um, it's a very reputable website. Tesco, massive uh, retail brand of groceries in the UK, and it's got a you know recipe uh, subdomain, a recipe section of their website. Again, big brand. Just eat. If you want to order a burger. You can go to Just Eat and order a burger um, in your, if it comes up in your local area. So again, as I said, it's favoring big brands for this search. Now, let's try another search. Um, let's say running trainers men's. Okay, I've got auto uh, suggestion here. Now, if you're in the US, you may be calling it sneakers, but in the UK, we call it trainers. Let's hit enter. Now, I'm expecting to see Google return well-known brands. And, you know, here you go. Nike, Adidas, um, massive sports brands. Uh, you know, they're cl conglomerates. They make so many different types of sports equipment and clothing and gear, you name it. But you know, Google as and obviously running trainers or running sneakers, and Google recognizes that, and you know it's returned massive brands as I've said. And if I go back up, you can see a, a result for Sports Direct. Okay, now Sports Direct are a big brand in the in the UK for sports equipment or retailing or sports clothes. If you want to buy trainers or sports equipment, you can pop into your local sports direct or go on their website and find something um jd sports again they're massive okay um uh pro direct running very popular as is as is sports shoes okay uh m man and i can't really pronounce that um man d m direct okay i know the brand uh, it's really popular i've actually bought things from there as well um and the last result is amazon okay so yeah it's returning well-known brands. And even here on the right, we've got a knowledge panel for Nike uh, Revolution 5 men's. Um, what we can talk about what this is here in other lectures. Um, so let's try another search. I'm thinking of software now. So uh, web design software. This is uh, obviously an area that is related to us as SEOs, as you know, the website is our domain. So let's scan the results, let's ignore the, uh, um, the ads. So here we've got Tech Radar, a very popular uh, tech website that does reviews and, and uh, opinions and um, announcements. Here again, we've got a website UK that's popular, you know, and it's reviewing web software um, products. Webflow. This has become a very popular uh, web design software out there on, on the web. Um, it actually brands itself as not needing to code anything. You can design a website off, you know, off the fly without requiring a developer. WP Beginner. 
uh, again, this is a, a WordPress uh, um, brand or website that is very popular in terms of talking about WordPress CMS, as I've mentioned in previous lectures. And here it's got an article or a piece of content talking about the best web design softwares. Um, Adobe, you know, massive, obviously massive brand. They are they create all sorts all sorts of digital um, software. Um, the most popular one is obviously Photoshop. So again, you can see um, how Google has shown big brands in its search results for the search term web design software and because it believes from this search term that someone is probably looking for web design software and it wants to return results to its users that are reputable and it doesn't want to let you down it doesn't want to show you a website that you and i may have put up about you know, web design software and actually when you go on the website you can't actually buy a web design software or you won't even find web design software because you haven't created one the website hasn't hasn't got one it's just you know it's just created it for this for a bit of fun now that's what people used to do in the past it's something called uh, google bombing or google whitewashing where in the past people have created websites and got them to rank for terms that don't relate to it or the website is nothing about it okay for example um people in the past you created a, uh, a website all about george bush so if you typed in the word monkeys google will return to you this website about george uh, w bush the, the second george w bush um, the one who was in power in america more recently now if you go and search up the term google bombing you can find out about this more on a wikipedia page so in the past it was possible for someone in their bedroom to create a website about running trainers and compete with the likes of nike and adidas but now that's not really possible okay and it's a further evidence of what google is trying to do in terms of its world view uh, and that it's become more and more of a um, recommendation service than uh, a search engine and you know just to um you know add add more fuel to that uh, that argument when you find a product you know you don't really say oh i got it from that company you say i find it i found it on google and it's the same with amazon if you buy something from amazon you don't really remember the brand of the product that you bought um, from its marketplace you just say i got it off amazon um, because that's the biggest brand that's in, in you know in your mind that is you think you've got it from amazon the the, the company but in, in reality it's a uh, a company that is part of Google's market um, place that sold you the product and the product that you've bought it from. Um, so yeah, you know that's that's what I believe Google's worldview is, and it's something really important for your career as an SEO because you may be working on a, a website or you may join a company as an SEO, and they may be a very small company, a very obscure company. Uh, they may be a startup, and you know. They may say, hey, you know, we need to rank for this. Why are we not ranking for it? They may question what you're doing as an SEO, but you as an SEO need to show the bigger picture and say, hey, actually, you know, you're uh, a, a, a trainer uh, or a sportswear company or you're a software company, but nobody actually knows about your brand. You know, nobody's, nobody's critiqued it. No one's really using it. You know, so it's going to be really difficult to rank up against big, uh, big companies and big boys before we, you know, get the brand really popular um, and that's one of the difficulties in SEO showing the people above you what SEO actually is and what it means because a lot of people out there a lot of business owners out there have got an old school opinion of SEO and at times yes you can say it's an incorrect opinion of SEO uh, um, but you, uh, you as an SEO as an SEO professional as, as someone that is thinking about becoming an advanced SEO professional, you need to demonstrate your expertise and show them that your what your opinion is and and prove it so you get more respect as an SEO. Okay, guys, keep on watching. There's more to learn, as I always say.